For this uh, devotional message, I want to talk about uh, relational and emotional entanglements and also share about a promise that God gives us in our pain. And the premise is that we all have unprocessed pain in our life. I am enjoying a second freshly brewed cup of coffee and uh, sometimes it's nice to be able to think and to process and what we often do is we become uh, stuck in our pain we stuff it down we suppress it and we pretend that everything is okay when when it's not okay we're hurting and it's, it's a natural response. We try to ignore pain. We try to escape pain and we'll do different things uh, to, to medicate and to escape and to ignore. Uh, so the first step in processing pain sounds simple, but it's not because you're hurting, uh, whether it's from somebody else, uh, uh, you know, and what they've done to us or whatever the, the experience is or layers of, of pain that can happen in relationships. But the first one is to admit it, that we admit that we are hurting. We admit to the pain. We embrace the pain. Uh, Matthew chapter four, or chapter five and verse four in the Beatitudes, Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. So you actually mourn over the pain. You, you admit it, you acknowledge uh, that it's there. And uh, uh, our only text uh, for this uh, thought in processing our pain is 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 10. But in verse 7 and 8, Paul says, uh, In order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. He had this thorn in his side. And he says in verse 8, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. And so, uh, so Paul's admitting, man, this hurts. It's a thorn. Uh, that it, it, It's Satan who's attacking me here. And he is acknowledging it. He is embracing it. Now, as far as a timetable for processing pain and expectation we may have, there, there is no um, set time on it. Uh, we process pain differently. I know of people who have been stuck in something for years but it's because uh, they, they refuse to take the steps to process the pain. So I want to share with you right now that if you need a, a confidential conversation about this, to go deeper, need someone to be there for you, to help walk you through your pain and just be a, a friend and someone that's, that's compassionate, uh, I am available for that. But uh, the, the next thing is, and the, the last thing for this devotional thought, is to then... Uh, confess that you are weak, to admit that you are weak. Now, this is a difficult one because uh, it is human nature for us to want to be in control. We like control, but control is an illusion. Uh, when we think we're just in control of everything, God is the one who is truly in control. And so we have these insecurities and we are vulnerable and, uh, and Paul acknowledges that. And so here's what he says, and here's the promise to his pain in verse 9 and 10. Uh, but God, Christ said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I believe based on the context of chapters 9 through 11, and then what Paul says here, that we can know what the thorn in his side was and that it was other people. It was criticism. He mentions here insults. He mentions persecutions. It hurt Paul deeply. There were people that were uh, challenging and undermining his apostleship, his authority, his uh, leadership. And it hurt. He's trying to get the gospel to people, and yet he was receiving uh, this resistance and uh, this criticism, and that leads to relational and emotional entanglements. Could you imagine trying to always respond to the naysayers and the criticism and always trying to prove yourself and justify uh, yourself? And so Paul realizes here, okay, I have this pain here, and he, he doesn't stuff it. 
he admits it and he goes to God and he pleads with God about it. And, and, and God says, look, I'm not going to fix it all. You know, people have free will. All of the, these attacks you're experiencing, you know, it's not just going to go away. However, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. And that is the promise that God gives to each of us is that he is bigger than the problems that we have and that his grace is sufficient. We are insufficient, but his grace is sufficient. And that out of our brokenness, through his grace, through his promises, he can bring about wholeness and that in our weakness, we can find strength. And so, uh, uh, Wherever you're at today, any unprocessed pain uh, that you have, uh, especially if it is due to relationships and emotional entanglements that you find yourself in with people, that this is how you process to get out of that is through admitting and embracing the pain and also admitting and embracing and confessing uh, that, that you it's beyond your control and then you must release control over to God and allow him to fight your battles and allow his grace to be sufficient and that you can now delight in persecution and insults and things that people are throwing at you knowing you're not going to have the answers knowing that you're not going to be able to always uh, justify your character and your reputation but you can find comfort in your relationship with Christ and His grace for you.